bounce back. You get knocked over, you get back up. You bounce back, you get back. You might have to flex a little bit and stretch and mix and mingle, but you can get back to what you were and what you are. But God's people have always been able to get back up and carry on. No matter what the outcome, no matter what the situation, circumstance, time, day, age, uh, war, peace, famine, pestilence, sicknesses, we understand a little bit of all that today, better than we used to. That's good for us. That's good for us. For all we know, this whole experience was an answer to prayer. An answer to prayer. A lot of us have been praying, Lord, wake us up, wake us up, please, wake us up. And uh, this was a really a good, a good wake up to a lot of issues, a lot of issues. And so don't stop there, just keep praying for God to turn the lights on, turn the lights on and wake us up. In our uh, particular Sunday school lesson, if you have one, the adult uh, lesson here. Lessons of Jesus. Lots of things about Jesus. Things that he taught that are just very powerful. Hear it straight from the Savior as uh, time and uh, interpreters have preserved the scripture and preserved the teachings of Christ to bring it down to us today. That's remarkable. 2,000 years gone by and we have as good a record as probably totally possible what the Lord taught. So it, it's amazing. The Word of God is amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, the, uh, the first lesson here, second lesson, living by kingdom principles. Living by kingdom principles. Used to be a day when if someone called you a Christian, it meant a certain uh, behavior, it meant a certain set of beliefs, it meant a any number of things. Well, that probably flexes as days go by. But uh, what do you define a Christian as? What do you define a Christian as? You think about it. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, come now, Spirit of the living God, give us open eyes, open hearts, and open minds. <coughs> Receptive to understand, learn, study, know of Christ, know of our lot in life, and understand the grace of God. So in all things, we give thanks. Come help us now for these uh, minutes together that we have to study the Word of God, the life of Christ, and our circumstance today. <coughs> Claim such help by the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Living by kingdom principles. Uh, what does it mean to you? Well, amongst uh, Native American people, at least the ones that we worked around, uh, being a Christian meant going to church. That was one, one of the big one of the big deals. Well, if you're a Christian, you don't go to church? You don't go to church? What's wrong with you? It just kind of some of these things just kind of go together. Ever since I've been able to comprehend, and as far back as my mind goes, I recall being in church. I recall being in church. So, following Jesus meant going to church. It meant going, always meant going to church. When I was a kid, we went to vacation Bible school and Sunday school and worship. I, that's what it always meant. So it meant congregating together with others of like mind, like faith, like belief. And uh, that's what uh, one of the basic things about it. Jesus says, don't quit getting together to talk about God, righteousness, miracles, heaven. He instructed his people, don't forsake assembling yourselves together. There's power in togetherness. There's power in like belief and like faith. So the Lord help us that we understand some principles. <coughs> if you want to follow in Scripture and don't have a study booklet, 
in the Gospel of Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew, one of these first things that uh, the, the writers, uh, the people who put these uh, quarterlies together started with, they got us into the Beatitudes. One author said it this way, he said, the greatest holiness message ever preached was the Beatitudes. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, that sounds uh, good. It sounds right. And it sounds like something we should shoot for. And we all uh, like to get together for a variety of reasons. Eating and partying is one of them. But Worshiping and singing has become one of them, too. For uh, those of us who grew up with church, we don't ever want to quit going to church. That's what the kingdom of God means to us. So whatever heaven is, I'm sure that getting together in the Holy Spirit and with His help is something like whatever is out there that we're going to be in. Getting together in the Spirit of God is uh, one of the great joys great privileges and great benefits of the believer to be able to congregate together in righteousness and peace and joy. Amen. I like that. My times of thinking back on uh, going to church, people are always laughing and smiling and talking and sharing stories. Oh, there was a few grump grumpy people in there too. And then there was those that were troubled for a variety of reasons. Their health was bad, or they had lost loved ones, or circumstances were uh, really glum. But uh, they were there nevertheless. But in the overall, the times of coming together in the faith were great times. Great times. All through God's Word, you're going to find this one theme. This one theme coming through God's teachings. The grand plan of God needs people to make it work. Always, always, always in the teachings of Christ you will find that he's working to get more people to work the faith. The kingdom of God needs people not dogs and cats and goats and monkeys and horses. People. The kingdom of God needs people. God's blessings rest on those who understand and apply His truth to daily living and who go out and win souls and win people to the plan of God. God's plan needs people. Jesus was always trying to help His disciples get to the place to where they could win people. Win people. Win people. You want to please the Lord? Win people. You want to please the Lord? Make people happy. You can't make them happy, but you can work on helping them to find the tools, the foundation that they can, can be happy. Now, happy is a, kind of a wrong word. I read one author, he said it this way. He said, uh, only Americans <coughs> seek for happiness. Only Americans seek for happiness. In uh, most countries of the world, they just seek to survive. Mm -hmm. They seek to get another next meal, or a little income, or transportation, or some uh, encouragement. It's us Americans that are consumed with happiness. Where, where, does, where does the Bible teach you to be seek for happiness? Well, you can think about that. You can take that one home and think about that. Let me find it in the Bible where it says to seek for happiness. Are peace and happiness the exact same thing? Or is one a byproduct of the other? Which would you rather have? Peace? Peace? I'd rather have peace. And uh, if there's any happiness to be had, it'll pop out. It'll pop out. 
My kids, uh, when they were growing up, when they were at home, they weren't always happy. Because uh, there was a few times that uh, we put them to work. You all probably never said this to your kids. Go clean your room. <laughs> Make yourself useful. Or some other variation thereof. But we never, we never told them to go be happy. Go be happy. Go to school and be happy. That wasn't, that wasn't, it just didn't go right. It's just not the way you do that. You got to get the right things underneath. Happy might come and happy might not come. You see, happiness is the wrong thing to seek. Happiness is the wrong thing to seek. Look for principles. And in Christ's teachings, that's what you're going to find. In your Bibles, Matthew chapter 5, if you want to read with me, let's read down a few, uh, take a few scriptures here and read down through them. And uh, this is a particular message. We often call them the Beatitudes. But let's read it down there just uh, for the sake of reference. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was sent, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So here we have uh, some just straight, hard, cold, and fast teachings, principles. Out of which come issues like peace, productivity, learning, influence, influence, influence. God works to produce people that can go out and be an influence. You are an influence no matter how big or small it is. You are an influence. God works through spheres of influence in His kingdom. So, He needs good influence in order to produce His kingdom. Win people. Win people. Win people. Now, you find several times in this particular reading here, the word blessing. Uh, Becky uh, Forrider's dad used to always say this when he was preaching on the Gospels. He would say, Blessed or happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we equate blessed with feeling good. Blessed with feeling good. It gets a little tangled up farther down when it says, uh, Blessed are you when you're persecuted. Well, I, I find it a little hard to feel good in those times. But feeling good and being at peace, are they always the same thing? No. Someone can be railing against you, but you can still, down in your soul, be at peace. The teachings of Christ have power and depth to them. Power and depth. Now, people that believe in holiness doctrinally are often criticized for preaching something unreal, teaching something you can't attain. But all that is is teaching the nature and character of Christ. That's what that's all about. 
teaching the nature and character of Christ. Don't get thrown off by the word holiness. Holiness. Don't get thrown off by that. You just start thinking the nature and character of Christ. And that will help you reference. When you get there, there's a variety of ideas that jump off from the word holiness. There's some big church leaders in uh, huge, monstrous congregations. They are called His Holiness. Others are called Holiness. Don't get thrown off by the word now. If you wonder about religion and spiritual, go back to the word. Go back to Christ Jesus what he was and what he said. Amen. Always go back to Christ. What is recorded that he said and that he did. That will tell you what holiness is. Help us, Lord, to understand. But let's look at this. Uh, this word blessed as we have it in the scripture. Blessed are they. It has a variety of... Uh, accepted meanings and applications, but I like what the writer here had to say about the word blessed as we have it in this particular scripture. The word blessed, the idea that we have is that it's the connotation of God's approval or smile. God's approval or smile. So when we start to understand blessed to mean God's approval and smile, that, that doesn't necessarily mean he just heaped a bunch of money on you. Or just tickled your belly button you're just a barrel of laughs. <laughs> or you're bouncing off the walls with glee. Doesn't mean that at all. The idea that we get from that word blessed as it's interpreted and brought to us in Christianity is it's the smile of God. Now, a smile from everybody may not have any power for you, right? But there are a few somebodies that a smile from that one individual has meaning for you. Meaning for you and power. If the right person comes into your particular presence, and they have influence with you and in you. A smile from that person has power. Amen. Has refueling power. Has encouraging power. Has uh, stabilizing power. Gives you the sense of being favored. I like that. I said, you know, think, well, all God did was smile on me. What else do you need? What else do you need? They said, well, you know, couldn't he do better than just a smile? You got to remember who's giving the smile. Remember that. Who's giving the smile? If God's giving the smile, it matters not what else is going on. If God's pleased with you, He's going to see you through because you're in His plan. When you're in God's plan, He's going to see you through because He's got things He wants you to do. And He wants uh, something that you should become and will become if you continue to allow Him and continue to live and be in such a way that the smile of God comes to you and it's approval. It's approval. You know, I played football as a kid in high school. I wasn't any star. I had, I had a lot of fun, though. Every now and then, in the particular position I had, I had a coach that was a, a star quarterback for the uh, Nevada <coughs> Wolfpack, University of Nevada Wolfpack. He was a star quarterback. After he graduated up there, he came coach to our little town of Fallon, and uh, I had the privilege of uh, playing under him for one season. 
he was a stickler for details. And I was a stickler for not paying attention. <laughs> I didn't get many smiles from the coach, but every now and then, every now and then he'd tell us, this is what you do, this is what you do, this is the movement, this is the movement. No, don't throw like this, don't throw like that. He says, here's what you do. And he just, he just uh, did the movement over and over and over and over. Finally, I started to get it down started finally to be able to wave the ball and get it to its target. And every now and then, my coach would say, that a boy, who? <laughs> Just give me that quick little smile. That a boy, who? Quick little smile. That made the difference for me. One little smile. Yes, yes. Bless him. Are you, if you're in this category of being, or God's smile is upon you, when these traits are a part of your character, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are they that mourn. I circled a couple of these that we can dwell on them a little bit. Blessed are they that mourn. Mourning with the intensity of one who is patiently lamenting for a loved one who has passed away is the sense in which this verse is expressed. The strongest Greek word for mourn is used. We will truly know the joy of the Lord when our hearts are broken, not just for the sake of being broken, but broken for the right reasons. For the right reasons. I've gotten flat tires before and I felt bad about it, but man, not nearly as bad as if I was frank, losing a tire. You see? There's, now there's, there's cost of some real big concern there. And thankfulness that he wasn't going 70 mile an hour with a full load. Amen. Now, there's differing circumstances that we apply God's truth to. <clears throat> Blessed are they that mourn. Well, how are you be happy and feel good and satisfied? Feel God's smile when you're in mourning. Listen. When you're in God's plan, God is pleased with you. And one of the things that we need to consider today, especially today, is our fallen, sick, disgusting, backslidden world and society. We live in a very backslidden society in our country. There's a lot of good people in there. But if it doesn't grieve your heart to go down our streets and our towns and see the kind of stuff that's going on and parading and doing and the stuff that's going on in the politics of the land, and the stuff that's going on in city governments and state governments, and in our uh, context of uh, ancestry on our reservations. If that doesn't bring you to a place of mourning, you got some deeper work to do to reach that point to where God smiles on you for your mourning because you are so grieved with what's going on. Blessed are they that mourn. Yeah, it's kind of a contradictory thought and idea, in a sense. But when you break it down and see who it is who's talking, it's Jesus Christ talking. And at one point it has Jesus out on the hill looking out across Jerusalem, weeping. What was he weeping about? Their lostness their errant ways, their visions this way when they should have been looking at this. And Jesus could see that in 70 A.D., after he is gone, Rome would come in and sack and burn Jerusalem and kill thousands of those people. Jesus was in mourning for the condition of the people and the judgment they faced. And if we're not in some kind of mourning, the condition of our towns and cities and states and
and country and the judgment we face, we got some deeper work that needs done. Jesus was said, blessed are they that mourn for the right reasons. The plan of God. We got unsaved loved ones. Do you have any unsaved loved ones? Do you have any loved ones that are not Christian? That have nothing to do with God? What does it do for you? They say, oh, well, that's smart. I like if he would just straighten up. If she would just clean her act up. Does it cause mourning? God smile. Blessed or God smile is upon those who mourn for the lost, who mourn for the broken, who mourn for the depraved. God smile is on us because he can work with that kind of influence. He can work through that kind of influence. Amen. Our hearts are broken because of the condition of the world, and our own human spiritual inadequacies. Blessed are they that mourn. That spoke to me. I feel bad about a lot of the stuff going on. I really do. I feel bad. I feel bad for a lot of friends, yes. a lot of relatives. I feel bad for politicians I know. I feel bad for the leaders that uh, I pray for. But am I mourning to the point to where God smiles on me because he knows he can pour answers through this vessel? That he can pour his power through this sphere of influence out into this world that we're feeling so terrible about. Help us, Lord. Blessed are they that mourn. What is blessed? God's smile is upon you. Because you're doing as he taught. Praise the Lord. Let's, go. Let's move on down here. And uh, in verse 9. There's another thought we want to pick up. There's a lot of great truths in this particular lesson. And these people that research this and give us this quarterly, they, they give tremendous things to think and thoughts to dwell on and things to share and questions to ask. But uh, move on down to verse 9 of our initial reading there. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The smile of God is upon the peacemakers, for they are called the children of God. Blessed or the smile of God is upon the peacemakers. Not just the peace lovers. You know, when I was in college, back in 1970, 71, we had just loads of people come over the mountains from you know where into Nevada. They stunk, they littered, laid around smoke pot, and they said, peace, peace. Why don't you guys go on the other side of the city, man, you stink. <laughs> Trashing up our parts. Go preach to the wild mustangs out there. Go tell them peace. how we felt about it. At that point in my life, I wasn't anywhere near a mourning for the mourning for the trouble. Mourning about troubled people. I wasn't anywhere near uh, being smiled upon by God for anything good at that point. But I remember it. It didn't grieve me then, but years later when I thought back on it, I thought, oh Lord, But then, let's talk about this other one. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. He said, well, I, I try to keep the peace. The uh, writer here said, this, the verse doesn't say, blessed are the peacekeepers. Blessed are the peace lovers. It says, blessed are the ones that make peace. They reach out and strive to make peace. Not just kind of keep peace. Well, that's not my problem. Well, they're not my problem. Who cares? Yeah. It's no wonder we got problems. 
to the degree that we have. We don't have enough people mourning the conflicts. They say, well, I'm keeping the peace. I'm keeping my distance. I just don't go around those people. I don't have time for those kind of people. <laughs> I'm keeping the peace. Yeah? Keeping the peace and making peace are not exactly the same thing. Keeping the peace can mean I just stay away from you. I don't go near that folk. But I don't fight either. I'm keeping the peace. Yeah. A little bit different than making peace and reaching across some barriers here to be friends, to love. Care. Put yourself out a little bit. You say, well, that's kind of risky, isn't it? Oh boy, there's another one down here talks about risky. We ain't done nothing yet. Wait till we get persecuted for our righteousness sake. Oh, so we ain't done nothing yet. Help us, Lord. Says, Blessed are the peacemakers. The ones that are willing to just kind of rise up and get off it. And make the stretch. You say, well, you know, Paul's kind of hard to like. It's true. <laughs> Does it matter? <clears throat> Does it matter? You say, yeah, I don't want nothing to do with him. All right, you got some more work that needs done in here. You got more work done that needs done here so that you can get to the place to where, yeah, I know we've had our misunderstandings, but still, sis. I love him. Yeah. They say, oh, you're just saying that. No. I'll drink coffee with her any day. You say, well, is that No, it's more than that, too. You've got to be able to get to the place to where God gives you in your heart what it takes to be a peacemaker. <laughs> Instead of just kind of sitting back here, way far away, and being a peacekeeper. Well, I keep the peace. I don't open my mouth too much. I don't stir the pot. I mind my own business. I stay out of people's hair. Do you have God's smile? That's when we begin to figure out and find out what this holiness business is all about. This is where this holiness business that we talk about and preach about, this is where it starts to show as a real work of God in the heart and into the life and into the influence. Oh, help us, Lord. Yes, yes. Blessed are the peacemakers. Now. Actively making peace. Actively endeavor to see the right relationships with other people are maintained. When we accomplish this, we are doing the work of our Father and will be recognized as His children. And blessed means what? The smile of God is upon us. You say, well, you know, I, I want to be that way, but I just, I'm timid. That's fair. That means you'll start slow. That means you'll start slow and with little tiny steps and little tiny handshakes, maybe. And little squeaks for... You'll start slow and you'll start little, but start! Get moving! Get up off it and get moving! Work on it! Get in there! All of us are disgusting at some time or other in our lives. Even serving the Lord we're disgusting at times in our lives. But it takes people who are peacemakers to step in there and say, Yeah, I know you're having a bad day, Paul, but you're still my brother. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, this is how we get past the disgusting people. Many disgusting people won't be disgusting to you anymore when you start to become a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers. Praise the Lord again. Woohoo! One more. We're going to run out of time. In the second scripture reading, 
Matthew chapter 5, down in verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men. God works through spheres of influence. He doesn't just work through you right there on the spot in the moment. The Lord works through your entire sphere of influence. You are responsible for your sphere of influence. Not just where you are right now in the here and now. You're responsible for your whole sphere of influence. Uh, even if it stretches from Maine to San Diego, California. From Seattle, Washington to Miami, Florida. And no Alaska. <laughs> Praise God. Your sphere of influence, you're responsible for. It. That's why you pray for everybody in your sphere of influence. That's why you pray for you in your sphere of influence. Because God works through your influence uh, to be able to draw people. You say, well, I'm having a hard time. You say, well, what about Paul? Your buddy over there. The Lord's helped him. Well, yeah, he has, hasn't he? He might not even be there. He might be a thousand miles away. But God's using his influence. Is it a good influence? Is it a peacemaking influence? Is it a, I have God's smile upon me influence? Amen. Do you? Do I? These are the principles applied. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine. There you go. Because your influence is going where you didn't even direct it. Eventually, someone will say, you know, someone said you could help me. Oh, who told you that? I don't know anything. Your influence told them that. That's what happened. Your influence told them that. Your influence told them you could be a good friend. You could be a help. Your influence told them that you have something that they can think of. That you could help them. Your influence told them that. God works through influence. Because you're the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And all the light and all the salt that anybody and everybody's going to see and hear many times is going to be because of you. Because you are there. When we went to Cincinnati and worked there, had a good time, worked there for 10 years in a workaday, workaday world, attended the Christian Nation Church and well, preached a little bit, didn't preach as much as I was used to, but preached off and on, here and there, here and yon, here and there. But David, wake up, drive down the freeway, 14 miles, get out and work my rig over and get ready to go deal with people. And I mixed and mingled with all kinds of people, and most of them were, uh, well, they weren't quite in the class of holiness folks that I would say the Bible is trying to describe. You can draw your own conclusion from what I mean there. Their language didn't quite sound like, you know, uh, Christian Nation Church language. Uh, a lot of their stories weren't Christian Nation Church caliber stories. Uh, a lot of their jokes were way out there in the sensible. On and on and on. And I went into that and said, well, why'd you go there? Well, for the same reason you go into situations that you really don't care for. But you need the money. But I went there knowing and doing that for that. But I went there also, having had many years of ministry under my belt. And I said, all right, we'll get into this and we'll see what we can do here. But I'm not going to go there and preach to them because that's not what they're paying me for. So, I guess I just need a few old men. That's what we've done. That's what we've done. We just went and lived and visited and made friends with them. Made friends with them. Laughed with them when we could. Had them on the back every chance I could. Smiled and proved on them when I could. I made friends with almost everybody in there. I don't know, 100, 150 workers all total. Doctors, nurses. Uh, physical therapists, all kinds of other therapists and workers and drivers and schedulers. And I just caught them all, man. Just started working on all of them, making friends, making friends, making friends. They had, a lot of them didn't like me at first. That's all right. 
I just worked with them little, little by little by little by little. I made a lot of good friends. I made almost good friends. I made a few mediocre friends. I made some that just became acquaintances. So, but in the end, individuals who are asking me to pray for them, God will work through your influence if you'll allow him to. You are the salt of the earth. The day I says, I gotta go, I gotta go back to, I gotta go back west. I said, oh man. With them for eight years, ten years in that kind of work, but eight years of this one. So man, we're gonna have a party. They had the biggest um, retirement party they had there that day. Because God smiles upon those who will be what he wants them to be. No credit to me, the man. I just give them what God gave me. So did you fight with any of them? Sure I did. I fought with some of them. But I worked to be a peacemaker, too. And I got back in there with them. I said, let's do this work. Let's get this job done. Yeah. You're going to get beat up. You're going to get tried. But... God smile on you. Blessed are you. God smile upon you is going to mean the world of difference. In the world around us, in the world around you, in our world as we see it. Blessed are they that mourn because our world is falling apart and we're saddened, but we're praying. Praise the Lord. Study. Study the Beatitudes in the Gospel. Another thing. As we go along and try this experiment of what we're doing, I want to try to make room for questions and comments along the way, too. But uh, if I get on a roll like preachers do, there's, uh, we just kind of roll along. <laughs> That's okay. We want, we want to learn. That's the whole bottom line here. We want to learn Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the word gives to us the life and teachings of Jesus Christ the Savior. Jesus, the universal Savior, universal, all mankind, all ages, all days. Thank you, Lord, for being God to us. Thank you for being Savior. Thank you for giving us the word, preserving the word for us all these thousands of years. Now, Lord, bless our people as we go, return to our homes, return to our work through the week, our lives uh, in the week ahead of us. Bless us with your presence, your power, your love, your keeping. We thank you for each one here today.